My name is Nachami Andrew, and we're going to share from the Word of God. We're going to share a story of a renowned man in the Bible called Prophet Jonah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time, for your presence that is here with us, for your word that is life to us, that is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. As it comes forth, let it bring life and illuminate our direction. We trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, so Jonah is a man of God, called by God, ordained by God to be a prophet to his people. So let me just read through the first verses of the book of Jonah, chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittite, saying, Arise, go to Nevith, the great city, and cry against it for their wickedness has come before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So when he went down to Joppa and found a ship, which was going to Tashish, paid the fare and went down in two to go with them to Tashish from the presence of the Lord. So Jonah has been given a directive by the Lord Almighty to go and preach to the city of Nevive and tell them to repent. For in 40 days, God was going to destroy the city. But after Jonah getting the message of God, Jonah immediately diverts and gets into a boat at Joppa and diverts and goes to Tarshish. And the Bible says that Jonah was fleeing the presence of God. It's so sudden and it's so alarming that this is a very man of God, very anointed, very called for such a time as that, but he was fleeing the presence of God. So Jonah gets into the boat and everything is okay. And God is quiet and he's going on his own way. He had the money to pay. The Bible says that he had the fare. He paid the money. He got into the boat. So he set for sale and the boat started on going very well. And everything was okay. The cargo was on the key okay. But in the process of moving, the Bible says that then the Lord hollered a great wind and the sea and there was a great storm on the sea so that the ship was about to break up. What does this tell us? Sometimes God tells us to do things and we don't do them. And we begin off on our own journeys and our own directions. And at the start, everything can seem very okay and very fine. But in the process of time, God will always have his way. And the Bible says that God sent this storm just because of Jonah, because Jonah had chosen to take another route other than to obey the voice of God. So Jonah, the man of God, is on the wrong route, fleeing from the presence of God. When Jonah got onto the ship, he went and slept in the cabin. So when the storm came, these men tried to, 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 to cause the ship to sail, but they kept struggling and Jonah was asleep. So they told every man on the ship that every man should wake up and call upon their God. What does this tell us? There comes a time in life when situations are hard and everyone needs to call upon their God. Not all these people were Hebrews. In fact, they weren't Hebrews. They were of different, they were of a different nation. But in the time of crisis, they forget about their cargo after throwing it out and after making the ship light and they realize the ship was about to break, they decided that every man should call upon their God. After they had done that and they had called upon their God, they realized that one man on that ship was in disobedience to what their God had said. When they cast their lots, their lot fell, the lot fell on Jonah. And I like what verse 9 says. Let me begin from verse 8. They say to him, Tell us now, on whose account has this calamity struck us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And from what people are you? Then this is what Jonah said. Jonah said, He said to them, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord God of heaven, who made the sea 
and the dry land. Even in the place of his disobedience, even in the place of him running away from the presence of the Lord, Jonah still recognized that he was a Hebrew. He still recognized that he fears the Lord and the God of heaven who made heaven, the sea, and the dry land. This is an encouragement to you. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. But if you believe in Jesus Christ and you are born again, the time you, you realize you're wrong and turn to the Lord and turn to the Lord, you realize that you still remain a worshiper. So Jonah was telling them, I am a worshiper. But in real life, it can sound now like hypocrisy. It's like you find someone in a club and they are boozing. And you ask them, man, what are you doing here? And out of deliberate effort, and they come, to, they come back to themselves and realize that they are children of God, and they tell them, I am a worshiper. So just an encouragement to you. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. As long as you still believe in Christ Jesus, you are a worshiper of the Lord. And you just need to get back on the rightful track. So, in continuation with the story, the man decided, they asked Jonah, what should we do for you? Jonah said, you just get me off the ship and throw me into the water so that I may save you this destruction. The, Jonah knew the kind of God he was serving. Friends, our God is awesome. Our God is powerful. Our God is great. And when his wrath comes out, it's also great. So Jonah knew the kind of God he was serving, and he knew that God will not let this ship stop, this storm stop, until Jonah is off to serve his purpose. So, in life, there are things that we get into, the jobs we get into, there are things that we pursue, and God has not told us to pursue them. But they just come out of our own disobedience. And in your hearts of hearts, you really knew, God told you to not do that thing. But for you decided to go your own way. So a time will reach. You may start up well and everything works out well and everything is sailing well. But it will come a time when God will shake up whatever you're in. It could be the political game. It could be that business. It could be in those finances. God will shake them up until he gets you out. Uh, I remember my pastor, one of my pastors, he's a late pastor, Emma Lukoye, told us of a story. God sent him from UK to come to Uganda to open up Glory House Ministries. But before he opened up Glory House Ministry, he said that he came with some good money and he opened up a computer cafe on Kumi Road. The business started well. He bought computers. Customers were very many. It was the biggest cafe he had ever, that we Bale had ever had. In the process of time, power kept going off on his line only. They kept calling the people who were in charge of power, the Umeme team. They could not respond. They tried to respond. They tried to help him. But all the, all the same, they could just spend up the money and not help him. So he resorted to use a generator to run his cafe. In the process of time, as he kept running the generator to run the computers, there came a time like after a month, the computers were hit. The generator, the generator power hit all the computers. And in one day, within about 30 seconds, he had lost everything that he had worked for and invested in. Then when he went back to God, he remembered that God had told him to come and open up a church. So he put aside the business and put aside all the computers and found a place of a way of disposing them off. And he started the ministry. So in simple terms, whatever God has called you to do, you do. It's, it's true that God has given us a free moral will where God accepts us to do what he wants us to do. God doesn't force things on us, but God gives you a chance to choose. But God is powerful and awesome that if you make the wrong choice, he will follow you up and shake up whatever you're cleaning on until you get to the right direction. Now, this is not that God is bad. This is because God loves us. If he doesn't love you, if God didn't love you, he wouldn't follow you up. But because he's so gracious and he loves you, he'll follow you up and shake up whatever material thing you're holding on to until you give up the world and follow his purpose. So when Jonah accepted to be thrown out of the boat, 
he fell into the water. Then the Bible says that God had prepared a great big fish. The big fish swallowed Jonah. Now, when the fish swallowed Jonah, that's when Jonah remembered to pray to God. Jonah thought that maybe when they throw him into the water, he will die and everything will cease. But let's pause a, let's pause a minute. What's the problem? Why is it that Jonah didn't want to go to preach to Nevi? Now, Jonah didn't want to go and preach to them because they were an enemy to the children of Israel. So sometimes God will send you to uncomfortable places. It's very easy for God. It's very easy for you to do the will of God for the things that you feel comfortable in. When God sends you to a friend, when God sends you to someone that you like to give them good news. But when God sends you to your very enemy and tells you that you're going to give them good news, it's really challenging. But Jonah had to serve the purpose of God. So in the belly of the fish, the Bible says that Jonah cried out. He was in the belly of the fish for three days. He cried out. Even in the deepest fish, God heard the cry of Jonah. It doesn't matter wherever you are. If you can just call upon the Lord, he can hear your cry. It doesn't matter how deep or low you are, God can still hear your cry. So God heard Jonah's cry and told the fish to spit him. And when Jonah was spat, he was spat to the side that was next to Nevi. Then the Bible says, then the voice of the Lord came back to Jonah and asked him to go to Nevi. So even after you repent and ask God for forgiveness, God gives you a chance to start afresh. And his voice comes afresh. My son, I've called you to come and do this and the other. So Jonah accepted the call of God, but he accepted it because he had gone through pain. So this tells us that if God tells you to do something in a nice way and you don't listen, God is going to bring uncomfortable conditions to you and you cry out to him. And when he pulls you out and you repent, he'll give you the same assignment. Friends, there is no skipping of classes in God's class. You can't say that you've left Nabiyonga P1 and you're going to Kokonjeru P7. In God's class, whether you go, when you leave Nabiyonga P1, you'll go to Fairway P1 until you finish the class and pass it. So there's nothing like skipping the steps of God. If you've fallen, God is so merciful, he's forgiving. Repent, catch up, and you, God is going to help you to start afresh. But if you don't want to go through this, just be humble and listen to the voice of God forever he wants to take you. So in conclusion, to finish the whole story of Jonah, Jonah is spat. Jonah went to preach in the city of Nevive out of frustration, out of the condition he went through. He repented and he went to preach. He had no microphone, he had no taxi, he had no bicycle, he had no horse, he had nothing. But he had to preach to the people of Nevive or else destruction was, come to, was going to come to them. But it's so amazing that even after Jonah repented, he went to preach in the city of Nevive, but he didn't even like them. Imagine this man came out of the sea with his wet clothes and started walking with dry patches on his skin, preaching within the city. And the Bible says that the city of Nevi was a three days journey to walk through the whole city. And so Jonah preached the message out of frustration. But God still listened. God, the, the people of Nevi still listened to the message. The Bible says that everyone in the city of Nevi, they humbled down themselves. They didn't give the God's water they didn't give the cows food they didn't give the chicken food anything that for a period of time the whole city of nevith was in fasting and praying imagine you just come to mbali and you just hear all the cows are crying all the chicken are crying all the children are crying no baby is having milk that day but it was a require a cry of repentance so the bible says that jonah went and got himself a comfortable place to sit and wait on what will come to the people of Nevive. He thought that he would preach to them and they won't change. But the, the, children, the, the, the people of Nevive heard the voice of God through Jonah and decided to repent and ask God for forgiveness. So after the fasting and praying, God forgave the city of Nevive and stopped 
whatever plague what was going to come upon them. So when Jonah waited, because the destruction was going to come in 40 days, when Jonah waited on the 37th, 38th, 39th, and the 40th day, and nothing had happened, Jonah felt bad because God had forgiven them. God, if God was to have a weakness, his weakness is his grace. When you repent and ask for forgiveness, it doesn't matter how big or how small or what you have done. God is so gracious that he will forgive you. And he doesn't even base on the basis of the preacher to forgive you. He bases on his word to forgive you. So brethren, in conclusion, let's obey the voice of God that we should not go through the turmoil Jonah went through. The things that maybe God told you to do 2006 and this is 2020 but you've been playing around and you really know what God told you to do. But you've been chasing after money, you've been chasing after fame, you've been chasing and you forgot to chase after what God told you to do. It's high time you get down and do what God tells you to do. When you, when you do what God tells you to do, he'll give you success in the other areas of your life. Above all, the Lord is merciful and gracious. And every time we ask for forgiveness, he will forgive us. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word that has come forth. We ask you, King of glory, that let it change our lives. We thank you for your grace that you forgive us every time we repent. We ask you for your grace that gives us the opportunity to do what you wanted us to do in the initial part before we disobeyed. We ask you, Lord, that strengthen our lives and help us to live a life that is purposeful and we are serving your will, that we shall not waste our years. But as David says, that teach me, Lord, how to number my days and apply wisdom to them, that every day we shall serve your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you.